Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our five-part webinar series, Get to Know Dynamics CRM Online. I'm Prashant Rao again from Computer Solutions East, and along with me, is, we have our CRM expert, Ian Smith from Syncretech Solutions, and Sumit Balani, from uh, a senior consultant from IO, IOTAP. We really appreciate all of you taking uh, your time out from busy schedules and joining us in huge numbers. Uh, today, part four of our demo series is about automation of customer service processes. Service is what ideally defines happiness and delight of our customers. The reason a customer would stay loyal to you and keep coming back depends on how, uh, how you support and service them. Every time a customer comes to you, they expect an increased level of satisfaction as compared to his previous experience. Automation of customer service processes would ensure adherence to your promised SLAs and satisfaction to the customer. Let's recall the statistics we have used in our dynamic CRM overview presentation. It said 86% of the consumers are willing to pay more for a better customer experience. 65% of customers have left the brand due to a bad customer service. In all, this is how important a streamlined customer service management system is for any business, especially for SMBs like us. I would, love, I would now uh, request Ian to uh, take over and guide us through the customer service automation demo. Ian? Hey, thanks Prashant. Um, appreciate it and hope everybody is having a great Friday and looking forward to the weekend. It's uh, super warm here in uh, July and uh, if you're not in vacation mode yet, at least you can be in weekend mode. So I uh, hope everybody stays cool this weekend and uh, stays near a, a pool or the, the, the beach or the ocean. And uh, thanks again for joining us, and thanks, Prashant, for that intro, and uh, thank you, Sumit, for also joining us. Sumit is uh, with uh, IOTAP, which is an independent software vendor that provides the email-to-case solution that we'll be providing today. If anybody has any difficulty hearing me, just uh, please uh, ping me uh, with a question or a, uh, a comment. Um, so we're going to jump into uh, the demo very quickly today. We have a lot to demo and this is uh, our slide deck. I'm going to skip over the formal introductions of Prashant and myself and just uh, to show that we're going to say, I'm going to say that we're going to show four different ways to create cases in CRM. So we're going to convert emails to cases in Outlook. We're going to have a, a phone call come in and uh, be able to convert that phone call to a case. We're going to be able to see existing cases that are associated with the customer that's calling in with a screen pop. That's what we're calling our CRM to telephone integration by QGate. And the uh, also have ADX Studio Portals um, demo set up to be able to enter customer self-service uh, enter cases via customer self-service. Uh, we'll also be able to update the cases and uh, add attachments and we'll be able to see that that's uh, the same as uh, the same database. It's just an extension of the, the CRM system for internal users. We're able to extend the, the forms and the views and the data that you see in the, in the CRM system out to uh, customers so that they can access your CRM system uh, in a different licensing model uh, with the with the web user interface. Uh, again, we have uh, Sameet from IOTAP with us today, and uh, we have configured the email to case automation. This is a really nice uh, add-on for CRM. It's uh, I would say super inexpensive in terms of value for what you get uh, because you can automate your emails that are coming into a particular queue. So a queue is just uh, basically you think of it as a, a shared mailbox or an email address that can say support at yourcompany.com. And once those emails come into that queue, CRM will pick them up and convert them to a case and handle a whole bunch of uh, uh, processes in an automated fashion so that we'll be able to reply back to our customers and let them know that we got the ticket. It's been set up and somebody will be uh, working on it shortly and uh, it also alerts your customer service folks that there's a new case in the house that needs to be worked on. Um, and then 
will show how to work on those cases with managing the business process of the guided business process flow within the form of the, of the CRM system. We'll also look at some cues and how we can see what cases uh, we're presently working on, what cases are available to work on. If we're not able to complete a case, we can put the case back into the queue so that somebody else can work on it. Um, then um, we're going to also show service level agreements, and there's basically two service level agreements. The one is the first response time, and uh, that just says, hey, you know, we got your ticket, we're working on it, we've created a case, people are aware of it internally, and we're going to get back to you as soon as we can, and we're going to resolve the case as soon as we can. So we have two service level agreements, we have one for first response and one for resolution. And then there's actually two different levels. There's one level for bronze and silver plans, and then there's another level for gold plans. So we have different time arrangements when we have commitments to get back to people and resolve cases. Uh, again, we're going to show processing of cases in the CRM system. We're all going to show, also going to show Power BI and some reporting capabilities right in the CRM system, and we're also going to show the mobile app. Um, so I'm actually going to jump right into the demo. I do have uh, several more slides, and these slides are going to be available as uh, content on the um, on the uh, webinar. Um, so let me jump right into the content because that's really going to be. Uh, we really do have uh, some some nice content lined up for you today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my home screen in CRM, and I'm going to go to a dashboard view. And this dashboard is a little bit of a hybrid because I have uh, a couple of views here that are um, panes, or I don't know what they're called, panes, like uh, windows, um, that are from CRM data. One is a, a chart, one is a view. And then I have a couple of these window panes um, that are, I know that's not the right word, uh, that are right from uh, Power BI. I think we're calling them grids or something like that. So, so we're going to take a look at Power BI in a little while because it's got a, a lot of capabilities in terms of uh, visualization of your data. And one of the things when, when we're working with the CRM system, we expect it to help us figure out, you know, insight into our into our data and you know what are the most important cases that we should be working on next uh, you know this is in, again in order to provide the the best customer experience we need to know you know what's happening and who's working on what and which customers are uh, we have a commitment to serve at, at, a, at a certain service level and get back to them in a certain time so what I have here is a is a view of just the cases that are either expired uh, they either have expired uh, service level agreements or um, soon to be expiring cases uh, in terms of the customer uh, uh, service level agreement. And this is just the resolve by. So there's, again, there's two. There's the first contact and then there's the resolve by. So the first response is usually within one or two hours we get back to them and let them know that we have the case and then the resolve by is usually two or three days. So here are the different people or queues that are working on the cases. Uh, this is actually a team and this is our customer service folks and the orange is telling us that they're nearing non-compliance and the blue ones are pretty much already gone. They're, they're already non-compliance and, and we are working in a demo environment here so there's a lot of demo data. Some of it got kind of um, loaded initially uh, before I started configuring. So there are uh, any number of cases that have been created a month or two ago that, that are past their compliance due date in terms of resolving. So they're not all resolved. But what we're going to do today is we're going to try the ones that we try and resolve the ones that we can. And so I'm going to go ahead and open the screen a little bit to a bigger view. And what I can see here again is uh, I can see a chart make that a little bit bigger and I can see these are the cases I I am in my demo persona here of Veronica Quick and this is a situation where I can see that I have nine cases that are nearing non-compliance and I would like to take a look at those and see you know maybe if I can resolve them so basically 
now I have side-by-side uh, -side a, a view of data and a chart of data. And if I click on the graph, it's an interactive view. So I can see that these are the cases that are nearing noncompliance. And then if I just browse over a little bit, I can start to see that the warning time for failure of these cases is, is coming up. So I'm looking at cases that are basically July 22nd, July 22nd. And I'm going to try and resolve some of these cases before they expire. And I can click on the case right from here. Um, I'm just going to show you another couple of views so that you can get a feel for how you know best to view this data. So it's always nice to be able to look at this data and again you can put filters on the data so you can narrow it down to, to just seeing the records that you want to see. So then I'm going to go to some other views here. I'm going to look at cases and I'm going to look at the cases with the open um, open cases and I'm going to put a filter on this and I might say just show me my cases and I might say show me cases that are nearing non-compliance And then again, I can see, I can see the times that these are going to be expiring. So I'll just start picking some cases out here and and working through those cases. And when we go into case processing mode, we have the guided business process that we're familiar with in, in all of the different CRM entities. And that's just going to provide us with a, a consistent best practice to move us through the cases. So as I, as I would like to move through the cases, I just, now I need, now I know what I need to do to resolve each case. Now this is, these are, these are demo configurations here, so I haven't spent a lot of time configuring what the various questions are or actions that I should be required to resolve. Uh, or, or address before I can advance the case. So I can basically just kind of click through some of these things in a demo mode to say, hey, you know, assume that we're resolving these uh, cases on a, on a, on a, you know, we're chip, chipping away at everything that needs to be done to solve these cases. So we're identifying the products, we're assigning any particular entitlements, we're making sure that the description is clear, we have a parent case, uh, we've confirmed the email, and then I just go ahead and advance to the next stage, at which point we, we need to know whether a first response has been sent, and, and when it has been sent, then we go ahead and click that, and this would stop or, or successfully complete the, the first response of the service level agreement to let them know that it's um, now been satisfied. Um, the the KPIs are, or, or the service level agreements are really a nice piece that's built into the CRM system now. Uh, for customer service, there's, um, there's uh, two different types of, of service level agreements that you can configure. One is called just a standard customer uh, service level agreement, and then the other one is an enhanced one. So I've just been using the enhanced service level agreements here, which has more data and it has specific um, information associated with each service level agreement that has more capabilities. You can put these, you can put the cases on hold. Let me find one that's actually still um, um, not expired yet so I can show you with the timer running. So I'm going to go back to my cases. I'm going to find one that's nearing non-compliance. Let me show you one that's in progress. So 
So unfortunately, I don't have any. We'll see some come in in a minute that have. Uh, here's one that's in progress, actually. Okay. So in progress, we have a bronze plan here. And we have a service level agreement that's due in one hour and 16 minutes. So it was really due in uh, two hours, and it started uh, at 12.30. So it's due at 2.30, and we're going to get a warning at 1.30. So have we reached the warning time yet? No. Uh, what's the status? It's in progress. And the same with uh, the resolution of the case. So that's due in, in three days total. So we have two, hour, two days and 23 hours to fix it. And I can put the case on hold if I want for any particular reason. And that pauses the service level agreement. And then when I put it back in process, we start the clock running again. And I do have... Uh, notification that it was on hold for a period of time and I had it on hold for less than a minute so nothing added up here but if it did it would tell you how long it was on hold for. Um, if we change the service level from, from bronze to gold so I have less time now. I only have 15 minutes for the first response. I only have one day and 23 hours for the, for the resolution. So what happens next is if I say, go through the process again, I'm just going to go ahead and hit next here. And if I say that the first response has been sent, and then I hit save, Still, still clicking. Oh, succeeded. So there's a workflow that's running in the background. So let me hit F5. And we see that that first response now has been succeeded within the hour, which was uh, in alignment with the gold level service level agreement. So, so you can structure your work around identifying the cases that are next to expire in terms of service level agreement. And if you're um, keeping track of everything, you'll be able to provide better customer satisfaction and meet those commitments. So that's um, a little bit about uh, figuring out which cases to work on next and you know, responding to each case in a timely manner. Um, so next we're going to look at four automated ways that we can enter new cases. So I'm going to go back to my regular case view that I had up here. It's a plain old case view. And I'm going to go to Outlook and say that I got an email in. Somebody's having a, a server health alert. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to track this email in the CRM system and then I'm going to convert it to a case. And if you notice, it, it figures out who the email is coming from, so it's a contact record that the email is coming from. And I can have an opportunity here to assign a subject. So subjects are a nice feature in the CRM system, especially for customer service, in that they let you keep track of uh, various um, categories of, of customer service type tickets. And it's used throughout the system, especially with knowledge articles, so that you can associate cases or knowledge articles with subjects and then if you have a, a case that has a similar subject you can go and search all the knowledge articles that have a matching sub subject. Or you can find existing cases that have been resolved, I should say resolved cases that were resolved with the same subject. So I'm going to go ahead and convert that email to a case in the CRM system. And it does open up the form, this is optional. But uh, if you notice, the first thing I did was I just copied some of the text from the, from the case. 
uh, actually from the email when I first opened up the email. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste that into the description. And then I'm going to basically um, save that and close out of it. Well, if I go to save it, it wants to know how the email came in, the origin. So I'm not sure, let's see if that's going to show up in CRM right away. So here's the case we just converted from an email, and now it's in the CRM system in a matter of a couple of clicks. So I was able to get that description in there. I was able to get the customer. Now, if you notice, the customer was a contact when I had it in the Outlook, but through the magic of some background workflows, I was able to convert that customer contact to an actual customer account. So now the case is associated with the customer account, not the individual contact of that customer. I uh, also populated the origin, and I have now a, uh, a service level agreement that's been assigned to this customer by default. And I have started the ticking clock on the, on the uh, first response KPI of two hours and the resolution of the case in three days. So now we're going to talk about the email to case. And the email to case, I'm just going to show a quick PowerPoint here. And basically, um, the email comes into a, a CRM support queue. And the CRM support queue has two parts. It has the native CRM support queue, and then it has the IOTAP, which is a third party. Uh, independent software vendor that provides this add-on solution called Email to Case for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And that has a whole bunch of configuration options, such as exclusion, so it doesn't allow certain email formats that would be looked at as spam to be coming through uh, and creating cases in your CRM system. It actually creates the case. It, it links uh, any emails to existing cases, if there is existing cases, and then it provides a series of auto responses to the CRM system, uh, actually from the CRM system to the users that sent the case in. So I'm actually going to put a uh, message in my chat window here. So if anybody wants to try this, you can just go ahead and send an email to support at MSP four nine two four eighty six dot on Microsoft dot com and this is just our demo queue in the system. And so I pasted that into the chat window. So it's just an email address and the email address is um, associated with the queue and then the queue will do its magic and convert the cases to um, uh, convert the emails to cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show it real quick and then I'm going to have uh, Sumit who is uh, joining us today from IOTAP just uh, give us a couple words on the uh, on the configuration of the solution. So here you can see for example an email that came in and these are all, okay so here's a, a support request and this is what the email looks like that went back out to the customer and we're basically just saying thank you for contacting us and we've opened up a case here's the case number for future reference and if they reply back to the to the to that email then those additional notes will get added to the uh, the customer support ticket also uh, I also get an internal notification so I can open up the case right from here 
So I'm not going to do that. Um, but I am going to go to the cases. And I can see these are all ones that were associated with. So here I can see the, the way that the cases were created. These ones say that they were created from Outlook. For some reason, they have a, a Yammer icon there. But they should probably just have a regular old email icon, same as these ones do. So these emails were all opened from, um, these cases were all created from emails. And one cool thing about it, if you notice, that the first response, response by, you know, if we had to respond in five minutes, these all still would have succeeded in terms of supporting our service level agreement. Because we were able to respond automatically no matter when these emails came in, whether they came in the middle of the night or whether they came in in the, in the first thing in the morning, we're able to respond to them right away through the automation. So you can see kind of a series of emails that come in here. All the activities are tracked. If I go to this view, it might show it a little bit better. I can see all the activities that are associated. This is open activities, but if I say all activities, so the, the first email that came in from the customer and then the reply back to the customer and then creating the case and then um, there was also an internal email notification. So there's a whole series of uh, activities that are, that are going back and forth in terms of communicating. And, and keeping everybody up to date uh, that there's a new a new case in the system. So I'm just going to show very briefly where we configure some of these settings, and that'll kind of have a, a, a short conversation about how the configuration is for this. So this is the add-in for for email to case. And Samit, um, if you want to just comment on a couple of these uh, configuration options, there's a whole bunch of configuration options from exclusion to, so here's all the choices. So you have uh, general configuration, you have uh, excluding certain emails, case creation rules. Um, Samit, you want to sure. comment on some of these and what, what some of the best features are and why uh, how this is really a big advantage over what's available out of the box from CRM. Sure. So we start with the exclusion. So there are a lot of uh, emails at support you may be getting from Yammer, a lot of spam emails. So you can just uh, exclude, put the subject line, and all those emails will, will get excluded from the case creation. Then there is an option which says ignore emails received in CC. So basically, if, uh, in some businesses, uh, we don't want the cases to be created when, it's, when the support is mentioned in CC. You just want to track it. So that option is also there. Now, when you scroll uh, down in the case creation, uh, link new cases to, this is an enhancement. So if you see the first option says account search contact. So always the new cases would be linked to the account instead of contact. So it, it would search the email ID in the uh, CRM database and find the account and link it to that. And there are four options available. So you can link it to account, to contact, based on whether it's B2B, B2C, uh, any option can be used here. Then the good, good feature here is uh, attachments. Now uh, you can copy the attachments directly to the case notes and you can filter um, sometimes the there are some images in the signature, so you also have an option to filter those images. You don't want them to be copied into your case, so that option is there. Then uh, automatically when the case is created, the email body is copied into the case description. So we strip the HTML part and only the text is put so that it is very readable. So this is, uh, this is for the case creation aspect. Now, a case owner assignment section, there are a lot of options for uh, setting the owner of the case. So it could be a fixed user, it could be a team, and um, there is a round robin also available. If, if your CRM on-premise, then we can have it assigned based on the round robin algorithm. And um, there are some uh, more, more features uh, for overriding the owners. And once you start working on this, we can actually get into more details on how we can override the owners with the specific uh, business logic. 
Then the very cool thing uh, here is the case linking part. I, I'll come to the forwarding feature, but before that, the case linking part. Uh, when you're using out of the box email to case, uh, if the subject line is modified, uh, CRM doesn't understand that this email is in regards to an existing communication and it will create a case eventually. But using this, uh, we have an algorithm which can check the case number in the email subject and a new case will not be created, it will just link it to an existing case. So even if the subject is modified, still this works. And then um, uh, the uh, email notifications. So uh, when a case is created, you can set the uh, notifications can be sent to the internal team, the support team that you have. Of course, you can send it to the customer also. So that, that is there, which is the external email template. And the same options are available even for reopening. So if the case is being reopened, uh, here also you can select uh, the template, what template you want to use uh, for a case which is reopened. Now, um, external email notifications, again, this is cool. So when an email comes in, uh, an auto response goes to the customer. And at the same time, you can have uh, the CC of the email as a case owner. So the case owner is also informed directly in that email. So that option is also there. And then, yeah, all these are the internal email notification. Various settings are there. So yeah, there's a lot of configuration settings here. I just set up the basic ones to make it work for this demo. But um, <clears throat> uh, one question on case forwarded, case yeah, this is, forwarded email. I'll just explain what this is. So uh, what happens is uh, this is the feature which we have put in the latest release. Now, a uh, lot of times when, when I'm working at, uh, I'm working as a support team, so a lot of customers are emailing me directly instead of sending it to support at uh, my company. So uh, with this feature, I can, what I can do is the email that I have received, uh, I can forward it to my support, support at iotap.com, so I'll forward it to that. And uh, there is a case marker that I have to put in the email subject before forwarding. So email to case will realize that this is a forwarded email and it would go into the email body. It would read the uh, from address. So from would be my customer. So it would read the from address and it would send an auto response directly to the customer. And basically it's simulating that the email has been received from the customer and not the one that I forwarded. That's excellent. So that helps uh, cut down on the, um, the extra pieces. Uh, it interprets the email correctly and interprets it from the person they originally sent it instead of the person who's forwarding it. Yeah. So that's outstanding stuff. I uh, heartily uh, recommend the, the IOTAP solution. It's, it's a great value. It provides a, a lot of um, add-on capability for, um, for, for managing your cases in an automated way. We're, we're going to implement this ourselves internally to have better case management of our uh, support for for small businesses in terms of their uh, networks and also their their CRM systems. So um, thank you, Samit, for joining us today and uh, appreciate it. And um, um, yeah, good stuff. Keep it keep it coming. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. We have uh, a few more things to cover today. We have uh, inbound calls from uh, anybody. So an inbound call from one of your customers. Uh, that could that could be associated with uh, existing cases, or they could be wanting to create a new case. So we've demoed this in the past a little bit for for sales automation, but it's uh, another add-on. It's called QGate Breeze, and it's basically a CTI. So that's uh, an acronym for Computer Telephone Integration. I like to call it the um, CRM to telephone integration. Um, we actually have a um, a Skype for Business Cloud PBX calling solution that's tied into this demo environment. And when I dial the number of the user that I'm using the demo persona of today, I should, let me do this, get it started. What I should get is a, pop, a screen pop for one thing. So it's coming in over my link. But I'm actually going to open it using the application. So I'm going to answer the call. And the first thing I can see is that it knows. I'm going to get some feedback here. It knows who the call came in from. Uh, in
terms of the, the contact and the parent account for that contact. I'm going to go ahead and click on the parent account so that now the system is going to go out and look for all the records that are associated with that parent account. And so it should be able to find any open activities, any opportunities, any cases that are associated with this account. And so here, the first thing it's going to do is pop up the account itself. And then over on the right here, we can see any activities. I don't have any activities that are associated with this. I do have opportunities and I do have cases that are associated with this with this customer, System Integrators Inc. And then basically what I can do is I can identify which case it is that we're talking about. And then I can associate that case with this call. So once that's done, I can take any case notes. Just have to click in the notepad here. And then I can close the call. And then basically what it will do is it will allow me to continue to work on that case in the CRM system. And it will create the call notes automatically, associate those call notes with the case. And we had Ryan uh, Pennant from from QGate on the on the call three weeks ago when we demoed this, and he was saying that it's a little bit slow because we're on the um, on the go to webinar, but otherwise it's pretty much um, quick, you know, very instantly uh, showing up uh, in terms of popping the information. So here we see that the the phone call was tracked. Uh, the case that we we're referring to was was opened and we can go ahead and continue working on this case and just do everything that needs to be done to complete the case so um, again you know you see the the customer service agreements one of them's been accomplished and the other one's still running um, and there's another thing that we can do here is we can look for similar cases so when we're inside a case we can try and find cases that have similar subjects. Um, okay. Well, this usually works. We don't have a whole lot of uh, resolved cases. And basically what that allows you to do is associate, it it's a, helps you find cases that are have similar subjects. And, and if you find a similar case, like we finally did, screen's a little jumpy, um, you can see the activities that were associated with that resolved case. And if those activities help resolve the existing case, then you can associate that case with the existing case. And basically what that is, is just a connection. And it shows now similar cases. So if somebody is looking for a solution for this case, we've basically identified that there are some similar cases out there and they can refer to that case and look at the call notes from that case. And similarly, we, we are also able to identify knowledge base articles that are associated with the case or that help resolve the case. Um, I think we'll visit that a little bit more in future versions. Um, it wasn't completely working for me. Um, I didn't get a chance to completely uh, configure it. Um, but again, just you know, continuing down the line, we're able to resolve these cases on a, on a routine basis by just clicking through the process. So another way that we can enter cases and have customers get to our uh, get to their information. It's uh, it's a joint effort between 
you know, the customer has an issue and we're res working to resolve the issue, and they may have additional information. So, you know, sometimes it's definitely a, a joint collaboration to, to resolve the case. You know, one party can't do it without the other. So the tighter that you're integrated, the closer you're working together, um, you know, the faster you're going to be able to get things resolved. So one of the ways that customers can get closer to your data uh, and, and your information and your system and your processes is if we give them a way to access the information that we already have and then also to provide us with additional information, additional notes, additional scenarios, uh, screenshots. Um, they can see when we've updated our notes and they can see what we have as the current status of the, of the, uh, of the case. So basically what we've got now is, um, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of the, the CTI. I was going to go full screen mode. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that for one second. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in here. So this is the ADX Studio portal. And we are doing a self-hosted model, but ADX Studio Portal works with both CRM Online and on-premise. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Uh, ADX Studio Portal Technologies was uh, acquired by Microsoft about a year ago, and it was incorporated the, uh, the, the ADX Studio Portal Technologies were included in the latest CRM 2016 online spring 2016 wave update one whatever you want to call it um, that came out a couple months ago around May 2016 uh, so it's now available on a subscription model and so what I'm going to demo here today is uh, not yeah, open cases so there's a security built in where I can only see the cases that are for the the customer that I'm associated with or the customer account. So this Ian Smith here is a portal user and a portal user is basically a contact in the CRM system that's con been configured. Uh, you can register online and that can start a, a, an automated workflow process to, to, to gain access to the system. Um, you need to have some back office uh, web roles to have the, the access uh, permissions to be able to view and, uh, and uh, enter and update cases. Um, and again, it's associated with, with your parent account, so you just need to be uh, verified that that contact is associated with that parent customer and that parent customer is an actual customer. That parent account is an actual customer. Um, and then you'll be able to, to have a, a login to, to view existing cases. So this is just a view here, and we can sort by any column heading. I'm sure we could uh, configure this to have filters. Um, if we click on this hyperlink, it'll show us a detailed view of this case. So you might recognize some of these cases. I mean, these are the ones we've been working with during this demo. And you'll notice that everything that's in the online system is exactly the same data as what's in the CRM system because it is the same database. There's no separate database here. It's, um, it's basically an extension of your CRM system running on the web. So CRM forms and views now become in the ADX Studio web application, the, the, the portal, they become lists and, and uh, so entity lists and entity forms is how we configure the the uh, ADX Studio portal. In, all the configuration work actually is done in the CRM also. So we have a web page, and then a web page can either have on it an entity list, which this is, it looks a lot like a view, or if we go to edit, uh, let's actually create a new case. First we'll show you how to create a new case. And we would like to know how to share Power BI dashboards with outside contacts. And just say what type of case that is. Priority. I'm just going to copy the brief description into the lengthier description. Um, I can also include an attachment. 
and submit the case. So there it is here, and then I can also show a refresh, how to share, so this is the case now in the CRM system, it's categorized as a web case because it came in from the web. Again, we're tracking it by customer. service level has been applied. We have the note that was uh, attached, screenshot. And we can, we can update this from either direction and it, it works both ways. If you want to update the case, just edit. And you saw there was also a button there where customers can and resolve the case themselves, or they can cancel the case. And so we see those updates come through right away. Okay, so that's uh, ADX Studio Portal, and I'm going to show next a really nice way. I'm going to go back a little bit to the beginning. So that when, when we look at dashboards, we can see some degree of, not reporting there, but we can see visualizations. And there's another old school report that's included out of the box with CRM, which is a, um, it's a, called a case summary report. And the nice thing about this is, um, first of all, it's out of the box. And second of all, it does, it's like a pivot table. And so I have across the top all the cases in terms of various status. And I have along the side who the owners of these cases are. So I can get a quick view in terms of uh, metrics or counts, how many, how many cases each person has and how many are in progress and how many have been resolved. And this is basically for a filtered range of um, uh, created on in the last one month. And I'm also filtering on uh, active or, or, or uh, canceled or resolved status cases. Um, so I can change the, uh, the column going down the left so I have it here as owner. I can also change it to customer. And just refresh that. So I can see, actually, this needs to be status. Status, status, status. It's not, it's not alphabetical. And um, this I was gonna make, what? Customer. So now I can see down the left, which is a long column, uh, all the different customers that we have and how many cases that we have in progress for, for them. And so we see system integrators has really been pounding us with 19 cases in the last month. And that also Valley Forge IT has given us uh, another 24% of our cases, 25% of our cases. Then we can also see what subjects are hot. So CRM support, okay, IT services. So you get a quick view of, of, of what, the, uh, what the hottest uh, subjects are in your CRM in terms of support. 
Um, so now um, the other thing we can do right from here on this dashboard is we can go right out to Power BI. So we can take any of the grids from the Power BI view um, and show them in the CRM system. So I could open up this. Uh, let me just click on there and see what happens. I think I already have it open now. So I probably have it open twice now. Okay, so here's our CRM system. I'm going to hit F11, go full screen mode. So this is a, a dashboard. It's a, it's out of the box, believe it or not, and um, it's Power BI. Um, Power BI subscription is uh, really you know uh, inexpensive. I think it's ten dollars per user per month um, if you don't have a uh, a plan that includes it for free. Um, so it's a great tool. Um, actually, there's Power BI. Is, uh, is basically a free license, but it's just the Power BI Professional is $10 per user per month, and you need the Professional because this is a content pack. So the content pack does require the Professional license. Also, if you have an on-premise database, then you need Professional. Um, but otherwise, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you're looking at once you get, a, um, get going with the Power BI, and this is a content pack that basically deploys in a couple of minutes and you get all of these out of the box visualizations of your of your um, of your data uh, from your CRM system, and you can filter it by last 30 days, last seven days, current week, current month, different statuses. And the list goes on. the The number of visualizations here is amazing. And that's out of the box. Uh, last thing I wanted to show today is the um, mobile. Lost it. All right, let me go out of F11. And there's mobile. And let me go full screen here. <coughs> so I'm going to go to... Um, cases, and these are my active cases. I'm just going to go ahead and open up a case, and I can see the same kind of uh, visualization or, or guided business process that I had in the, in the full client. So this is, um, this is the mobile app, which is free. It's included with CRM online and CRM on-premise. Um, uh, if you have on-premise, you just need the internet-facing deployment to uh, to make your CRM system web-facing. Um, but you know, I have the same kind of capability here, where I'm prompted to to fill in the information that's necessary for each stage, and and walk through the stages. Uh, if I have a red asterisk here, then it's going to make it required. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going and resolve the case. Solve. And um, let's see. Uh, well, that's all I have for today. I, I could do a, a recap of uh, everything that I covered, or we could we could take questions. Um, this is the first uh, webinar demo that I finished five minutes early. Correct. And uh, uh, I would request everyone uh, to put in their questions or uh, if they have any specific uh, uh, detail or, uh, you know, situation scenario that they would like to discuss over here uh, into the questions window. Um, and we would be able to, uh, you know, talk about that or uh, answer to your questions.
Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a lot more we can talk about in terms of the uh, configuration of the processes. Um, you know, this was probably uh, three or four days worth of configuration and, and uh, um, you know, testing and, and uh, working with the demo data to get all this working this way um, with all the various uh, applications and integrations and add-ons. Um, so, um, you know, we can't show all the, uh, the configuration behind the scenes in, uh, in a one-hour demo, so hopefully um, you just saw it work and you saw, um, you know, things that you liked and uh, if you have any questions about how to configure this, these, uh, these features for your CRM system, uh, you know, we're here to help, so please let us know.